welcome again to Super Series Bowls on ABC Sport and to the World Cup at the Warilla Bowls Club. Today, it's the women's final. Well, only the best of the best get to attend here. Each competitor has to be a national singles champion. Let's see who's made it through to the final from this elite field. From South Africa, Lorna Trigwell, a regular visitor to Australia. She'll probably be surprised to find she's playing Judy Nardella from Australia. And Shubak is with me, and Shuey, Judy Nardella, a giant killer, can she take that extra step? Why can't she, Steve? She defeated Karen Murphy in the final Australian indoor last year, and she was a rank underdog, really, against Val Smith in the semi-final. Lorna Trigwell, one of the most uh, credentialed players on the world circuit, she should win. She should, Steve, but it doesn't always happen, does it? She's played four Commonwealth Games, two gold medals, two bronze medals. She's a short price favourite for this final today. Joining Ian in commentary will be Drew Morford. Thank you, Steve, and what a final we look set for here between the two blonde bombshells. And uh, with Judy Nardella rolling the jack, here's Eric Johannes, who's been our marker during the series, right through the World Cup, South African representative, now living locally, and Judy Nardella from Melbourne leads us away. thought she'd have made it as far as the semi-final but her victory over Val Smith gets her to the final she won the Australian indoor she's now in a World Cup final these are dizzy heights for Judy Nardella and the other blondie Lorna Trigwell the world number one from South Africa Both hearts would be racing just early in this final. Yes, Drew, very, very important. Uh, Yarraville Footscray in Melbourne, Judy's from. And would you believe, Drew, that her son, Dean, and daughter-in-law have driven 10 hours overnight to watch Judy play in this final. dedication to the family and uh, Judy not letting them down either with her second uh, big improvement on the first. There's Dean and Donna Maloney yeah. driven all the way from Melbourne to Warilla. Dean to watch his mum play in this final and yet the husband has been banished from the rink. <laughs> As Tony uh, Nardella not allowed to sit in the grandstand. He's got to peer over the back and get it come and sneak out and get an update of proceedings. A little bit of a nervous start from both players. A good correction from Judy for weight. She's playing interesting here that Judy feels the forehand is the best side to play. Lorna playing the backhand. Much better line this time. Might just turn away underneath. Oh, heavy and narrow, so it really swoops away. Eric! <coughs> How far is my ball then, please? The last ball or the... Yeah, no, that one. This one, yeah, it's about a foot and a half. How many inches? Say about um, <laughs> 14 inches. Well, is it a foot and a half or 14 <laughs> inches? Well, that's 18 inches, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the crowd's having a good giggle. Oh, the reason Lorna's asking a question, she wants to get a mental picture, but it also helps to relax the players when you ask the marker. But now her picture is blurred. <laughs> Most definitely. Well, they haven't covered themselves in glory in this opening end. Mm. Oh, now he's changing his tune, Eric. He's saying 15 inches. South African representative Eric Johannes now based here at Warilla. He speaks fluent Afrikaans, so, but Lorna doesn't understand that. She speaks French, Italian. Born in the Seychelles, Lorna Trigwell. Lived in Italy for many years. Look 
at that prodigious little pop-up of the head and shoulders when she's delivering the bowl, Judy. This is looking pretty good. You better. On you go. Three average bowls on the forehand and then switches to the backhand with the fourth bowl, Judy Nardella. And only nails the number one shot. Lorna Trigwell, she loves to attack, plays the full range of shots, whereas Judy Nardella is more the draw player. Doesn't possess the powerful drive or the firm running shot. That's her draw shot. Well, this looks a long way too narrow, and she... <laughs> underneath by a long way. A good start for Judy Nardella. And she'll continue to play her game, and it's worked in some big upset victories that she's had leading up to this. Yep. Two shots for Judy Nardella. Good start for the Australian. Aussie, Aussie. Good bold. start for the Aussie. 2 0 on the first end. Yes, Drew, and a bold tactic. Judy's gone maximum distance. She's got the mat on the tee. She rolled the jack to the other tee two metres away from the ditch. It's a 33 metre length. game is just drawing more than driving and playing weight shots uh, she'd be favored by the carpet and playing indoor which is a draw game isn't yeah it? it's it's all about precise drawing but the problem is if Lorna could outdraw Judy with the opening two bowls um, it's going to be difficult for Judy to convert the heads but she hasn't needed to convert she just keeps drawing the shot in front of the jack, the last bowl that went down. Lorna's bowl? Yep. Yeah, it's about the foot and a half. This came around from Scotland. Um, defeated by Lorna, 10-4, 5-4 in the semi-final. Lorna also defeated Lena Ahmad um, from Malaysia in the quarterfinal. Six all and 12-7. So Lorna Trigwell has got very good, solid form leading into this final. And here comes Blondie, as she affectionately known. And there's Tony Nardella, Judy's husband. He's behind the crowd, staying out of sight. Judy can't see him. He's peering between heads. <laughs> and when, when they change ends, Drew, he runs up behind the grandstand at the, at the head. He's not allowed to be near the mat, so in case Judy can spot him. So... <laughs> she wins this final, I'm sure I'd run on and give her a big hug and a kiss. Judy Nardella holding two shots. We get Eric Johannes, our marker, for this final. Judy has played state bowls, but Lorna is an international. Four Commonwealth Games appearances for a couple of gold medals and a couple of bronzes. So uh, what they've achieved in bowls is poles apart. Yeah, well, Tony, um, one, Eric. he's helped Judy a lot with her career. Tony plays at Yarraville Footscray Club in Melbourne. <sighs> it sometimes uh, drew its Two in a good measure. Two in a good measure down. Pressure on Lorna Trigwell. It's more difficult if you're supporting somebody actually from the grandstand and being out there with a bowl in your hand. There's no way you can help, really. Well, we know the son had no sleep last night. He was driving. I reckon Dad had no sleep either. <laughs> Two and a half. Measure down, Lorna Trigwell. Outside edge, and now she's definitely still two and probably three down.
three mm. green or lollipops. Dream start for Judy. Oh, this is looking really good. Oh, in you go for four. Just needs to slow down and I'll get an edge off the bowl. Oh, I ran through perfect line. This shot coming up for Lorna Trigwell early in a match in such a big final. If you make this shot, and it does so much to boost your self-confidence. On the other hand, if you fail, just a few self-doubts can creep in. And if she fails, her opponent is a long way in front early. She's missed the line again with the last bowl, Drew. She's narrow. Hits that Judy Nardella ball oh. over. Whoa, oh, she's she didn't need that. Definitely three down now. But it's a magnificent lead early, 5-0. Just looking at the backhand of both players, very unusual setup for both players. Short step for Judy Nardello. And body movement from both players on release. the mat. Fifth of nine ends in the opening set. Get up. Yeah, I missed the line as well, Drew. It's, a, it's just so unlike Lorna to be scratching around like this after five ends. Two trial ends and four ends in the match. You'd really be expecting class player to, to know where the line was and have the speed of the carpet. And that's one of the lowest effective rates we have ever seen. 29% effective bowls from Lorna Trigwell. And that explains why she's six shots behind after four ends. That's incredible. That's the world number one. Actually, she did say after her semi-final that she found it hard to adjust to the pace of this carpet after coming from other rinks earlier in the fortnight this one with the television lights and the oh. crowd is a different speed altogether and it looks as though she hasn't adjusted too much after the semi-final into the final well she's just miss losing everything on the backhand maybe she'd be perhaps well advised to try the forehand just completely toppled over here at the point of release the shoulders get low and uh, just Judy is a lot more compact, very short crouch stance on the mat and a very short step. And just keeps on drawing close. And the difference, a very crouch stance, the bowl is low, a very short step, the weight goes early. And just a very compact technique compared to the extravagant style of Lorna Trigwell. Rocks the bowl up and down about six times before delivering. And now she's three metres overweight. I'm break down and cry in a minute. It's, it's hard to explain when you're playing so badly, just the, the inner feeling, the emotion just is overwhelming. People sitting so close, you can hear every ooh and ah in the crowd sounds like a boo. Mm -hmm. Judy's not playing brilliant, but it's good enough. Look at the room there to get at that. Now, let's have a look at this technique. See where the left foot, that's a good angle, front onto that camera. See what the left foot's out. Look at where it's pointing, and then when she delivers, it comes back, should come back, aiming straight at the camera. See, that's outside the line. So then she has to bowl with the arm, and then that can cause narrow bowls. And there's another narrow bowl. You're trying to steer it with the arm instead of getting the body aligned. And it's, weight was terrific, but she just missed the line. Well, you've got a feel for Lorna Trigwell here. into the bar and have a stiff drink. 
asking advice from the market. <laughs> Judy Nardella looking for another big multiple count here. Can she make it three? Looking the goods. That's the best of luck. Three shots to Judy Nardella. And look at this lead now. 11-2 after five ends. So it was 11-2. And now it's 11-7. Last end of the opening set. Could Lorna score four in this end and tie the set up? And look at the, the way the match has changed with Lorna getting four of the last five ends. And she's having major, major trouble on the backhand, Drew. I, I, last end, she drew that shot on the forehand. Uh, it'd be better to play forehand in both directions. Judy Nardello's opening bowl. Not a lot to beat, it has to be said, but she beats it. <laughs> Husband Tony lurking behind the spectators. <laughs> He's not allowed to let Judy see him. And uh, he is at the head end and pacing up and down. That opening bowl, Lorna won't be getting four here, so you can effectively say first set gone. Yeah, and again, tactically, Drew, generally when you score four, it's when the jack has moved. So really, Lorna, obviously just trying to draw near the jack, should have been thinking, well, I'll try to draw near, but if I miss, you should have missed where that last bowl finished. Then she would have had a, some sort of opportunity to score the maximum count. At the moment, it looks like these Four bowls have fallen off the back of a truck. <laughs> I mean, they are scattered, just. And, and that's indicative of the mental pressure of the players. See how close those grandstands are? That's not normal <laughs> in a club competition. You feel as though the spectators are almost breathing in your ear from the side there. Lorna, narrow again. This is becoming an embarrassment for Lorna Trigwell. Good tactic here from Judy. A lot of players, Drew, when they're in Judy's position, would start smarting or, you know, just feeling more confident and trying to rub it in. And she's not saying anything. She's just getting on the mat, standing and delivering. very important when you are leading not to change the pattern of the match in any way. Don't start yapping and talking or running up after bowls. Just keep the match going the way it's going. It's up to Lorna. She'll have to change. Backhand with weight. Looking for the bowl and the jack. Wow, she's got three, but guess what? The first bowl is costly. But that is three shots at the moment to Lorna Trigwell. How many am I down, please? Off the shot bowl, onto the jack. She had two waiting behind. She needed to have three behind. Just goes to show the opening bowl with <laughs> nothing else in the way. She had to be jack high or behind, and she was metres short. Who would have ever imagined, Drew, that at 11 2, if this bowl fails, Lorna's only going to lose the first set of this final by one shot? Mm. Judy is a draw shot specialist. Has she got the weight? Not quite, but reduces the count. And that is the first set to Judy Nardella, even though Lorna Trigwell finished the set, winning five of the last six ends. Yep. That's a second set. Oh. finished up being one shot to the South African. And after at one stage it had been 11-2, Judy Nardella wins the first set, 11 shots to eight.
Start of the second set. Judy Nardella, a set up, 11-8 in the first set. But there was some momentum for the South African in the second half of the set. So this is not over by a long way. Well, Drew, uh, Lorna won six of the last seven ends. Sorry, five of the last six ends of that second set. And there's a lot of positive thoughts that could be taken by Lorna. She's won the last four ends in this match. It's so important for Judy to keep the pressure on Lorna. That's not a great opening, just over a metre behind. And that's going to allow Judy enough room to draw the shot. Her opening bowl was well, a metre and a half short. Again, it's uh, maximum distance, 33 metres. Needs to clear the short bowl nicely. Excellent correction for weight. <laughs> Big sigh there from Judy on the bank. Can I keep this going? Swamp the jack would be a good result, but not for the first time in the match. Slices the bowl. The jack nearer her opponent's bowl. Up or down, please. That was an interesting ask from Judy, up or down? Well, I think she knew she was up. That's a good question, Drew, because what it does, it just reconfirms a negative feeling for her opponent. She knew she was up. Just wanted to make sure and to let Lorna know that that contact on the jack was no good at all. As far as Lorna was concerned. Very important here to pass Jack High. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's around the short bowl. This should be good. <laughs> now, Lorna Trigwell may drive here. She's got the best two back bowls. A lovely forehand draw shot. Gee, it's a long way away. Yeah, but she's. this is her type of game. It's a very good skip in team events. Firm, controlled weight, looking for the jack into the ditch. Draw, she's got the jack, still one down, but three seconds. That worked out okay for Lorna Trigwell. So very important here for Judy to draw another close bowl. Oh, I don't think she's got enough weight. She hasn't missed the short ball. Oh, well, here's an opportunity for Lorna Trigwell. Judy, she needed to get another. Yeah, I had to be up. Oh, I've got one, but it's a slippery one. Good long look from Lorna. Well, Lorna's been to the head. She's one down, first end of the second set, but has a pretty good opportunity here. She has second, third and fourth nearest, so we'll see an attacking shot, either forehand or backhand, to take that bowl out of the head. It is not a toucher, so we'll see a firm, aggressive shot. But from this distance, how easy is it to hit that bowl? Tough. She's a class player. She's close. Come on, get that ball. She's narrow. Isn't she? Oh, yes. She's got it. What a top backhand. Controlled weighted shot from Lorna Trigwell. Oh, look at that. Exactly the way you call it, Chief. She got the shot ball out and she had second, third and fourth. Two. Oh, just oh, two. Okay. Mm. Still a good result for Lorna Trigger. 
So Lorna Trigwell, who won five of the last six ends of the first set, wins the opening end of the second. So the trend of the match has changed. And the trend of that end changed remarkably with the way Lorna found herself down. She was shot down and she went two up with that last bowl. At that stage, she was just uh, chipping the jack across giving the shot to her opponent. And then this final bowl yes. took out the shot bowl. Yes. And look at the confidence that Lorna will gain from that. She might have staggered to a sort of an 8-11 loss in the first set, but, uh, oh, that'll pump her tyres up at the start of the second. <sighs> well, I think she's still staggering mentally, Drew. But... she's thinking there. She might have said something if she hadn't had a microphone on then. <laughs> That's miles short. <clears throat> Judy Nardella hasn't scored for a while and that is a ripping ball. I thought her tyres were pumped up, but maybe somebody just let the air out. I think she had a puncher there. Mm. <laughs> She's had enough of the backhand, switching to the forehand. Women's singles at stake. The final, the Aussie leads, but the South African is coming back. Well, I'm picking Judy Nardella right now. She's drawing really well. You cannot rely on your attacking shots to win your game. It's just draw shots like that that get on the scoreboard. The drives and the conversion and the firm running shots may save a few shots, occasionally score you a few, but invariably you will lose a match if you're forced to play weighted shots end after end. Judy's chatting to anyone she can make contact, eye contact with in the crowd and a few deep breaths. I oh, she's got plenty of time while Lorna walks the length of the rink and back. <coughs> Looks to be shaping up to play weight here on the backhand. Effective rate, well, still 33%, very low, but she's got one. Oh, she's going to spring the jack out in the open. That's a good result. A very good result for Lorna Trigwell. But, uh, she hasn't played too many good bowls in this match. And that is a good bowl. Judy asked whether she was holding shot, and Eric Johannes said two, so you immediately think, okay, I've got two left, I can score four. If Lorna draws close, I could drive it out for three. So this is still, although Judy doesn't play the attacking drive near as well as Lorna, this is the number one shot coming up. Made a pretty nice, nice adjustment there to the wide jack. She's happy. Lorna has won the last five ends. Just 
still one to duty. Alrighty, just getting to Lorna Trigwell a little. Be careful here not to hit Lorna's bowl. Mm. Uh -uh. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's the luck she's having. It's all good for Judy Nardella. That was so near to promoting her opponent. Oh. Now it could be two shots for the Australian and is. So quite incredible that the Aussie scores for the first time in six ends, but she's in front of the match. Now Lorna really wears her heart on her sleeve. The emotions are up, down, there's frustration. There's a bit of anger with us there, and elation there. The advantage Lorna has, Drew, if she can outdraw Judy with the opening couple of bowls, Judy doesn't have the heavy artillery to, to you know, knock the bowls out and drive shots away from the jack and put the jack in the ditch. Her strength throughout this event has been her consistent ability to draw near the, the jack. Well, you know, Lorna was at 29% in the early stages of the first set. She's now up to 44%, still not brilliant, but she's clawing her way back, as champions seem to be able to do. I do like the fact that Judy Nardella can hang tough mentally. She's not a choker. Let's get something here. In for the shot, I'd say. Very close measure for Dan. That was a good... Now, well, that was a very good call. She's a bit cranky with uh, Eric Johannes, but he, Eric said it's very close measure. That's not very good English. But I think you might be down. That, the players liked it. <laughs> Sense of humor's come back from Lorna. <laughs> very true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lorna will be trying to trail the jack here. <laughs> Superb. Certainly now two up. And this is, see, it's impossible to draw this shot. So Judy's going to have to attack to try to open the head up. She has a back ball. She doesn't play the big heavy weight. See, and the less weight you play, watch the bowl turn underneath now. So when you play really firm weight, the bowl doesn't swing like that. Eric. Derek's not talking now. The back bowl. <laughs> yes. That one there. How far behind? This will Meter and a half. Meter and a half. <laughs> that far, I'm <laughs> She's not happy. Oh, she's not happy. She's getting really cranky, Lorna. Should be happy she's holding two shots. Just to come back to uh, Judy's weighted shots for our... I know a lot of our bowling viewers are very keen. How you get more weight is you've got to hold the step back until the backswing's virtually completed. You need to almost complete your backswing, then start transferring the weight onto the leading foot. Judy's weight goes very quick, very too early. So watch the step go. Step's gone, weight's gone, then it's just an arm action. That's why Judy does not play the weighted shots as quick. Can she get in and disturb this? Wick off that bowl. 
Good unlucky, still two down. So another end goes to the South African. Has won five of six ends in this set, and having finished the last set, the first set, with five of six. Lead of five. This is the seventh end, so three ends remaining. But I'm not sure whether Judy knows where her next score is coming from. Yeah, the momentum, it's incredible, isn't it? In sport, how quickly it can shift. And Judy's now scratching around a little bit. Lorna's out drawing Judy with the opening bowls more often than not. You mentioned that fa fabulous run, Drew. Five or six ends in this set. Five of the last six ends in the second set. She has won 10 of the last 12 ends of the match. But, guess what? That's the tiebreaker. Only needs two good shots from either player to win. Shots do not count in the tiebreaker. First player to win two ends will win this final. And it is certainly looking like a tiebreaker. Judy only needs five shots on three ends. That's not impossible for a tie and a victory. There's one of the five. How far, uh, Eric? Oh God. Near enough. And near enough. She's not getting the calls from Eric that she really wants. His hand might signal a yard, but he says a yard and a half. It's really the tension now. The spectators even, they know this match is there for the taking. Pressure might be just kicking in a little bit in the mind of Judy now. She's certainly looking like the winner in the halfway through the first set. So she's just not drawing and not correcting. And that's just mental pressure. Four Commonwealth Games appearances for two gold and two bronze. Lorna Trigwell, she knows all about pressure. She's got the bounce and the spring at the moment of somebody who's winning a game of sport. And at the scoreboard is say she's behind. She might have plenty of momentum, Drew, but if this final goes to the tiebreaker, which I think it will, Judy's drawing ability may well and truly come to the fore there for, to win this massive title for her. This is a good draw shot. Oh. Yeah, the heavily biased bowl. Look, it's almost going at right angles to the jack. That is 11 of the last 13 ends. Won by the South African. She leads 8-2. All the momentum with Lorna Trigwell. This could well be the last end of the second set. Judy needs a couple of shots here keep the second set alive. Otherwise, we'll be straight into the tiebreaker. And once again, Trigwell off to a pretty good start. Yes, and Lorna's won the last five ends straight, so Judy hasn't won for a long time. And if 
you've just joined us, <laughs> Judy Nardella jumped out to a lead of 8-0 in the first set and 11-2. 11-2 after five ends. She was batting like Bradman early, but she's a bit more like Trevor Bailey now. In those 11 ends, she scored 14 shots to Judy Nardella's two, Drew. But you know what? How this... far in front is that last ball of the jack plays, Eric? That's about the foot. Her drawing ability has certainly gone off Judy, but... That's the beauty of this format of sets play. You get into a three-end shootout, shots don't count. First play to win two ends. Lorna would be thinking, well, I've just got to keep the momentum going, but Judy's just as likely to regroup mentally and knuckle down to the tail. Look, Judy's just lost the plot. Yes. Yeah. But that could be preparing herself mentally for the tiebreaker. Why waste nervous energy now? Trigwell's grouping has really improved in the last half a dozen ends. That's three very good draw shots. She's exposed to Jack. So uh, maybe an opportunity now for Judy to come through and rest on that shot bowl or trail the Jack away. I think it's important here, Drew, for Judy just to get the shot on this end. Even if she doesn't get the two she needs to keep the set alive, just to try to take some, oh, the 50% effective, and Lorna Trigger was at 29% at one stage in this fight. Wow. She's not there. Your luck starts when you reach the head. Three down, and Judy Nardella drops two metres short. That was a deliberate bowl. Just putting a back bowl in. In case Judy trails the jack. Well, she needs to get the shot here, otherwise this set is over and we go to the tie break. She needs two shots, Drew. Mm. And that's not going to score. Oh, she's got the shot. So she stopped the momentum to some extent. So that is the first time she's won an end since the second end. She waited until the eighth before she won an end. But it is 8-3. The margin is five shots. So we go to the tiebreaker. The first player to win two ends. Shots don't count. It's just ends. Shortest end of the match, Drew. Lorne has taken the mat up three metres and has rolled a 24 and a half to 25 metre length end. That gives Judy Nardella a chance. It might give her a lot of hope anyway. One bowl wasted. I'm still sticking with Judy. No, she's only scored two ends of in the second set, but I just think she can nail the jack. Lorna, look at the angle of that bowl. Turn away. Lorna has won 11 of the last 14 ends. Judy did win the eighth end of the second set. They didn't have to play the ninth end. 
the pressure can do funny things. You, she's going so well, Lorna. And now we're getting the tiebreaker. And look at this. That is just pressure. The heart rate gets up oh, an extra 20 to maybe 30 beats a minute. And the adrenaline's pumping. And there's still a meter of room for the shot. Four bowls played. Looks like the Southern Cross around the jack and there's nothing near it. There's a competitor's area there in the background. This is a monster bowl for Lorna. She really needs to put some pressure on Judy. At the moment, Judy's holding one. She's short. Talk about the competitors. They've come from all over the world. Qualified for this World Cup by winning their uh, national title. Judy Nardella won the Australian Indoor. Actually, she's never lost a final on television. She only played one and won it. <laughs> well, I think she can do it here today. Lorna is actually losing at the moment. She's not winning it. She's losing it and she's given the room to Judy to draw the shot. That's probably the number one shot and that's the one that has to be beaten. Three quarters of a metre of room. Last bowl, trig wall. Better weight. Better everything. Oh, That's the one. shot. Is it the one? She takes the lead in the tie break. Wow, well, she's in front again. I wonder if the heart's going even faster now than it was at the start of the match. She is maybe five or so minutes away from winning the World Cup. She's one good bowl away, Drew. The first end of the tiebreaker was the shortest end of the match. This is the longest permissible length, 33 metres. One good bowl from Judy Nardella for the title. Excellent weight. Impossible to pick the winner of this match. Treguel, not to be denied. Switching to the backhand. It's a good ball here. She's drawn it. That's a match light. <laughs> Judy Nardella, a slippery grip on the title. Beautiful backhand draw shot. Treadwell with weight on the forehand. Looking for the jack or the shot bowl. 
There is a gap. She got the gap. Nardella even closer to the title. <laughs> Two bullets left for Trigwell. Very important here, Drew, a tip for our bowling viewers. If you play an unlucky shot, Trigwell, she was in the area, wasn't she? Who would have predicted she'd find the gap between the bowl or the jack? Judy really needs a second bowl in there, second shot. You do not change anything at all if you're Lorna Trigwell. You play identically the same type of shot. Which is almost impossible to play, and you're just marginally wider or narrower. Looking for contact. Slap of the thigh, that's not a good sign. Needs to follow through. Found the gap again. Oh, and now she only has one bowl left and Judy Nardella is still lying match. I think the match winner might have been played, Drew. There was eye contact with husband Tony then. <laughs> and, she, oh, and Tony clapped her. <laughs> this is so close. She is nearly there. She can hardly breathe. She's passing the pen. Praying. She lost her father, who was a bowler, and she often looks to the heavens and she thinks of her dad. She gains inspiration from her father. Hasn't blocked. Now, the, is this next bowl the last bowl? This women's final. Lorna Trigwall, she's matched down with one to play, will no doubt play forehand with weight. Best result would be solid onto the jack. She'd be very happy to take the inside edge of that bowl, but she's got to be very careful not to move her own bowl. Tough shot. Judy just said to somebody in the crowd, she'll play the kitty into the ditch. But if she misses, Judy is the World Cup champion. Looks wide. It's too wide. It's true. And Judy Nardella of Australia has won the World Cup against the mighty Lorna Tridwell of South Africa. Miracles do happen. And there's husband Tony who finally comes from behind the bleachers to congratulate his wife, Judy. She shocked everyone when she won the Australian Open. She qualified for the World Cup, but now she's won it as well. Wonderful scenes of Gorilla for Judy Nardella. Well, in the Battle of the Blondes, it was Judy Nardella from Melbourne who won the World Cup final. Judy, can you believe it? I cannot believe it. I can't believe it. Truly, I can't. I don't think it's going to hit me at the moment. I, I can't believe it. I couldn't watch that bowl. I thought she had it, but I've won it. She had a few cracks at that jack, didn't she? She did. Actually, I was thinking of taking the jack into the ditch myself, and I thought, no, I'll leave it back to Lorna. Let her have the uh, pressure to get it. So it paid off in the long run. No. And your draw shots were just great. What about the start you made? Yeah, no, I felt, uh, actually, I felt pretty relaxed today. I thought I'm going to go out and enjoy it, and uh, whatever happens, happens. Oh. Whoa! <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had to do it because my son come up, like, from Melbourne last night and surprised me this morning, and look, that, that just, I thought I can't let him come all the way for nothing. So I had to win it. And what was the deal with Tony? You wouldn't let him 
be there or he didn't want you no. to see him because we, he was hiding behind the crowd. I know. We do that every time now it's because I had success in uh, Tweed Heads to follow up through the Australian Indoor. He wasn't watching my game. He was watching it on the big screen upstairs and we decided this year we'd like to come up here. We'd do the same thing. But it's like the road runner. I watch his head going up and down <laughs> behind the stands and it's just, look, I just he's just been great support. And really the, the whole elbow team, my, my coach, Lachlan Ty and Rowan Sharp, oh, they've done so much for me that I could not repay them. The hours and the time they've coached me for 12 months to get through here, it's theirs as well as mine. Do you reckon the life's changed in the last six months? Oh, incredible. Incredible. I think it's... I tell you what, there's life in me yet still. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Blondie. Well done. Thank you. Thanks a lot.